the world was an oven set on broil. The abundant vegetation was gone. All of the big animals on Earth were at a huge disadvantage because they were big. Because they needed so much food and there was so little food around, they couldn't survive. Mammals, on the other hand, found themselves at a huge advantage because they were so small. Every species over 20 pounds, 70% of all life on Earth, went extinct. The conditions for life on Earth were radically reset. Suddenly, tiny, warm-blooded mammals, the ancestors of rodents, found their ticket to success. Today, rodents are found on every continent but Antarctica, in over 2,000 species with billions of individuals. And their descendants, every mammal on Earth, including us, would fill up every size niche in the world. In a mass extinction over 65 million years ago, Every species that averaged larger than 20 pounds was wiped off the face of the Earth. 70% of all life on the planet was destroyed. But tiny mammals, much smaller than today's rodents, survived. This guy would have been a giant compared to the mammals at that time. Evolutionary biologist Felissa Smith works with a creature approximately one 200,000th the size of a sauropod but no less important in the strange story of size. The amazing, size-changing wood rat. Well, wood rats are probably one of the mammals that are most sensitive to temperature. Bushy-tail wood rats are small where the climate is hot and three times the size where the climate is cold. Okay, let's go ahead and wear. The animals here in the southern part of the range in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains of New Mexico are the smallest. If you go up to the northern part of the range in Canada, to a fork, you'll find animals that are about three times the size. Wood rats even live in one of the hottest spots on Earth, Death Valley, offering a hint of how those earliest mammals survived when most everything else died in the wake of the asteroid hit. In Death Valley, for roughly three months, it's above lethal every single day. So how are the animals able to get around the fact? Well, for one thing, they're nocturnal. But that doesn't help much when nighttime temperatures are still 118. It's still above lethal. Smith made repeated ventures into the blistering heat of Death Valley and uncovered the wood rat's survival secret. Animals build these enormous dens, and we found to our surprise by burrowing deep enough in the ground, some of these animals were able to get to a place within their den where the temperatures were 36 degrees Fahrenheit, cooler than the outside temperatures, which is an enormous amount. It gives them an edge where they can actually survive. For the wood rats in Death Valley and those first mammals, being small was an advantage. They were able to hide out and survive on little until food sources returned and life on Earth could spread again. Mammals radiated out into thousands of species, from leopards to rabbits to people. And three quarters of those species have grown larger over time. A lot of groups, when you look at the sequence of fossils over time, you see that within a species, animals are getting progressively bigger. It's not true for all groups, but it's true for quite a few of them. For example, horses in North America have a beautiful fossil record documenting ever-increasing body size over tens of millions of years. In an evolutionary sense, there's always selection for larger size. You're better at getting mates. You're better at fighting with other individuals if you're a carnivore. You're better at stealing carcasses from other species. There are lots of reasons to get big. Blair von Valkenburg teaches ecology and evolutionary biology at UCLA. An expert on wolves, past and present, Valkenburg argues that with size comes risk. As meat-eating mammals grow larger, they reach a tipping point. It's really 
interesting, mammalian carnivores fall into two groups, basically divided by body size. Everything that's less than 44 pounds and pretty much everything that is above 44 pounds. Above 44 pounds, a meat-eating mammal has to change its diet to eat much bigger prey. Otherwise, it has to hunt too frequently. Imagine a day in the life of a wolf. And the wolf says, I'm going to eat mice today. So he goes out and hunts, catches a mouse. Yum, that's good. But I'm still hungry, so let's get another mouse. Still hungry, another mouse, and another mouse, and another mouse. Every mouse he catches, he's expending that energy that he gained catching that next mouse. So he can hunt all day and never get full, never be satiated. The balance between size, food, and the energy required to get it means that no land mammal carnivore could ever be bigger than 2,400 pounds, about 700 pounds heavier than the heaviest polar bear. Animals can't get infinitely big. There are all kinds of factors that come into play. Animals have to be able to get enough oxygen to their tissues to keep their tissues alive. If you're really big, that's not very easy to do. Animals have to be able to find enough food to feed themselves. If you're infinitely big, there's just not enough food in the environment. Also, most animals have to move around on the ground and support their body weight. And if you're too big, that just can't be done. The dire wolf evolved about 9 million years ago and grew to 150 pounds, twice the size of today's gray wolf, which made it an evolutionary success for a time. But the dire wolf could not adapt when the change in climate killed off some of its prey. After 100,000 years of coexistence with its gray wolf cousin, the big eater dire wolf went extinct 10,000 years ago. Meat-eating dinosaurs, of course, got much bigger. But even an energy-efficient reptile like T. rex bumped up against its maximum size. Tyrannosaurus rex was probably limited in how big it could get because it relied on meat. And there are studies that suggest that Tyrannosaurus rex was as big as a carnivore can get. Sometimes you can't just keep on getting bigger. What about human beings? Are we evolving bigger and taller all the time? And are we therefore at risk for extinction? There's no question that over the last 100 years, people have been getting taller, especially in North America. If you go to an old colonial home, the doors are shorter, you feel like a giant walking around in there. But is that a result of evolutionary change, or is that just a result of differences in nutrition? That's something we don't exactly know. Human height is something of a mystery, and the story is full of surprises, starting with the fact that we are now shorter than we were 50,000 years ago. Believe it or not, agriculture was not progress. Across the globe, human height has risen in the developed world over the last 150 years, from an average of five foot three for men to five foot eight, with women about five inches shorter. What accounts for this growth spurt? Better nutrition or an evolutionary trend brought about by mate choosing behavior that Charles Darwin named sexual selection? Or to put it in the terms of the mating ground, chicks dig tall guys. In general, I prefer taller men. If he has a larger and stronger physical appearance, it just looks better. I like them to be bigger than me, to feel more protected. It's just more attractive. I just, something kicks in. <laughs> Mate preference is one of those things where people don't always have all that much insight into their own preferences. Evolutionary psychologist Robert Kurzman studies human mate preference, gathering data in the controlled conditions created by a hurry date. You just have 30 minutes. And of course, this makes it an interaction where first impressions make a big difference because there aren't second impressions. What counts? Sparkling conversation? As far as we can tell, the conversation doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter. What they're choosing on are these physical features, how skinny you are, how tall you are. In choices influenced by deep evolutionary drives millions of years old, men desire women with low body mass index, the thin ones, and women desire men with size. 
just like in the non-human animal world, when people are looking for a short-term mate, people look for those things that correlate with good DNA. What we found was that the taller a man was, the more likely he was to get selected by women. A recent study of a West Point graduating class showed that the taller the man, the more children he has, mostly because of marrying a second time later in life. All across the globe, the story seems to be the same. Everywhere in the world where there are people who arrange marriages, one of the criteria that's always given is that the husband should be taller than the wife. Taller individuals might be sexier in that sense. Biological anthropologist Barry Bogan has been unraveling the mystery of human growth at the University of Loughborough in England for over 20 years, starting with the earliest known human ancestors. What I have in my hand here is a cast of the femur or thigh bone of Lucy, the famous Australopithecus afarensis. Lucy and her kind were quite short, shorter than modern day pygmies, under even four foot eight inches tall for the men. You can see that this femur would fit in just about here. From that humble beginning, humans grew until they reached an average of six feet tall, 50,000 years ago. It turned out to be a high point that we have yet to touch again. Things change, and we see a decline in stature, down to five foot three adult males. What could cause this reversal of fortune? As elsewhere in the story of size, a changing environment. It killed off the prey humans fed on and forced them to find new sources of food. People were not eating as well. People who previously hunted and gathered their food just couldn't find enough. And they started to harvest foods that probably were growing in their garbage piles. The seeds sprouted up and they said, hey, we can eat some of our garbage. It was the start of agriculture. And for a long time, it was a disaster. Believe it or not, agriculture was not progress. Agriculture narrowed the variety of foods people ate that resulted in nutritional deficiencies and smaller people. Good nutrition would be scarce and height would remain compressed until the late 19th century, when better foods, improved sanitary conditions, and health care took the brakes off human height. We caught up fast. And now the developed world averages five foot nine for men, five foot four for women. Not a record, but a best in the modern era and the trend is definitely up. Everything seems to be in place for humans to continue to grow. Nutrition, sexual selection, and the general tendency of mammals to size up over time. So, are we headed for the land of the giants? If we were to come back in two or 300 years, the human species would probably be seven or maybe even eight feet tall. It seems hard to believe, but the fact is, Humans have been getting taller every generation. It's a combination of nutrition and genes, but that combination is making our entire species bigger than they were. But not everyone agrees. Will we be seven footers and eight footers and taller? I don't think so. There is a cap on healthy human height. Bogan points out that above seven feet, people today encounter increased medical problems associated with their height. He believes that the greatest average height we can most likely achieve is a healthy six foot two for men and five foot eight for women. If I live another hundred years, you can come back and ask me if I was right or wrong. As human beings and all life on Earth moves to the future, all the factors affecting body size, from mating to predation to environment, will continue to be in play and are likely to produce amazing and unexpected results as size continues to evolve.